Welcome. This is 2049A video 2 and we're going to talk about essential math and prefixes. Um, essential math uh, there's various skills you can you can uh, get away with not having but there's some skills that you must have and here's a list of things that I think is really important. So for example I think it's really important that you can use your calculator correctly. Uh, there's classic mistakes. If you're dividing by 2 pi and you just say, for example, 48 slash 2 pi, you'll not get the right answer. You either have to have 48, let me write this down. If I were to type into my, if I were to type into my calculator, 48 divided by 2 pi I would not get the right answer because my calculator would think I needed to have 48 divided by 2 and then multiplied by pi if I put down 48 divided by parentheses 2 pi I would get the right answer or if I put down 48 divided by 2 enter and then basically answer divided by pi enter I'd get the right answer so making a mistake like this which is a calculator mistake is much more serious than just doing a, a, a simple math mistake it's it's significant um, a second thing I think is you got to know your prefixes there's a whole bunch of prefixes but these are one these are the ones that are commonly used uh, scientific notation so if you can go from three four zero 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 which is hard to read meters to three point four times ten to the and that would be one two three four five six seven times ten to the seven meters is much easier to read and therefore is more professional uh, simple algebra rearranging equations uh, finding the roots of quadratics, they're very common and very useful things you just need to know. Geometry, I'm really keen on these and I'll keep, I'll keep uh, asking you about them. So circumference of a circle, area of a circle, surface area of a sphere, volume of a sphere, surface area of a right cylinder, volume of a right cylinder, area of a triangle, area of a trapezoid or trapezium, number of degrees in a circle, number of degrees in a triangle, number of degrees along a straight line. Those are things that most physicists and engineers just assume that you know. If they change a question from a sphere to a cube, it's trivial for them. But if you don't know these equations, then it's the end of the problem as far as you're concerned. Trigonometry, knowing what the sine, tangent, cosine, and the inverse sine, the inverse tangent, the inverse cosine. Uh, just basic calculus, just using the power rule for differentiation, integration, and then using units. <laughs> um, occasionally in my class I'll get a student who basically is still giving me just numerical answers and they've not really got the idea, they've not embedded the idea that you know measurements have units. If you put down 28, the answer is, is it 28 meters or 28 centimeters or 28 seconds? What is it? It's just a number. So make sure you put down units. And then we have um, prefixes in some, a bit more detail. So for instance, yes, I want you to know that a pico is 10 to the minus 12 and a micro is 10 to the minus 6 and a kilo is 10 to the plus 3, giga is 10 to the 9, etc. I want you to know these. And I want you to know the symbols for them. But I also want you to be able to do conversions. So for instance, one kilometer is one times 10 to the three meters because you're converting it to SI units, the international standard units, and the equations work in SI units. Uh, if you add one micrometer, it would be one times 10 to the minus six meters. So that's pretty straightforward. Same goes for time. If I add one kiloseconds, that would be 10 to the 3 seconds. And if I add 
one microsecond, that would be one times 10 to the minus six seconds. There's an issue when you come to mass because the SI unit for mass is the kilogram, not the gram. So if I have one kilogram, that would be one kilogram. <laughs> Bad example. <laughs> if I had one times 10 to the minus six grams, I could not put down one times 10 to the minus six. So if I had one microgram, it's true that that equals one times 10 to the minus six grams. But the equations don't work in grams. So we have to convert it to one times 10 to the, not minus six, but minus nine kilograms. And what we did in going from here to here is we changed the unit and we basically divided by a thousand. We added minus three to the power. So if we look up here, let's say we had 17 picograms, then I would say the answer is, leave the 17 alone, 17 times 10 to the minus 12 grams. But in order to get the, the correct answer for SI units, it would be 17 times 10 to the minus 15 kilograms. And let's do an example the other way because this sometimes causes some con confusion. 22 teragrams. Well, it's true that that would be 22 times 10 to the plus, plus 12 grams. But that would equal 22 times 10 to the plus 9 kilograms. Now that causes a little bit of confusion because we went from plus 12 to plus nine and not plus 15. And the trick is that we added minus three on every time, not three. We added minus three on and so we got to add on minus three and 12 added to minus three is plus nine. So watch out for that. And then the next bit is to do with uh, linear things, area things, and the like. So length we've done, if I had 15 micrometers, that would give me 15 times 10 to the minus six meters. If I had 15 micrometers squared, that would equal, leave the 15 alone, and it wouldn't be times 10 to the minus six, it would be 10 to the minus 12 meters squared. So what's going on? Well, linearly, we have 10 to the minus six, but for areas, we have two dimensions. And so we have 10 to the minus six and 10 to the minus six. So that gives me the 10 to the minus 12. And if I had 15 micrometers cubed, then that would equal 15 times, and it wouldn't be 10 to the minus six, it would be no 10 to the minus 12, it would be 10 to the minus 18 meters cubed, because there's 10 to the minus six in one axis, 10 to the minus six in the other axis, and 10 to the minus six in the third axis, because it's a volume. In a way, if you think about it, micrometer squared is not micrometer squared. It's really micrometers squared. These need practice. Practice them. Get, get in charge of them. Get to the stage where they don't cause you problems. And um, let's do some class check here. So you can stop the video and, and check to see if you get the same answer as me. So let's have a look, 24.5. So it's gonna be 24.5 picometers. Pico is 10 to the minus 12. And it's gonna be meters. Standard unit for a length is a meter. So there should be my answer. 
then that would be A for the answer. And then for this next one, 27 milligrams, well, that would equal 27 times 10 to the minus 3 grams. But because we've got to work in SI units, we want 27 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms. So there's my answer for that one. So 27 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms would be that guy. Notice, same numerical value with the wrong unit, so watch out for that. And then 17.2 micrometers squared goes to 17.2 times 10 to the, well, minus 6 in one dimension, but this is an area. So it's minus 6 times minus 6, minus 12 meters, and it's got to be squared. So we have that for our third answer. Watch out, make sure you put the square on the meters because that's an area. If you just leave it with meters, then it's a length. And make sure you take the number of dimensions into account. So there we have it.